suplex. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Thoughts Count Anywhere. This is the Royal Rumble Go Home Edition of Thoughts Count Anywhere, coming to you live from the Gold Line Vegas Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada, the home of the 2021 snow blizzard this past week. <laughs> Dusting causes our city to come to a halt. I am Aaron Phillips, joined by Chief Matt Mullen, is sitting in here at the desk, and our special guest, Mr. Matt Robles, will be joining us in about 10 minutes or so uh, on the phone as he is traveling. And uh, we'll, I'll tell you what, I met this gentleman a couple of years ago at CAC. He's got a great extensive history in wrestling. And we are very anxious to have him on and chat with him as he is on his way to a show in West Virginia. We're going to get him on the road. Thank goodness he's hands-free, gentlemen. <laughs> so he'll be able to drive and stay focused on the road. So how are we doing this week, guys? Doing healthy, my friend. Adam doing healthy. Healthy. Mr. Matt? Doing good, just dealing with all the crazy, crazy people of Fremont. I'm telling you, we need to do a show just on that. Hey, by the way, our phone numbers, listen, while Matt's on, unfortunately, that's going to tie up our call in line. But after our, we complete our interview, 702-329-6947, press the number one to get into the studio. If you're outside the United States, 1-855-502-4321. Also press one to get into the studio. Send us a live tweet using hashtag thoughts count anywhere. And, of course, our chat rooms are being monitored. Good morning to John Rankin is already in the chat room. Uh, so we are looking forward to that as everybody is in. Okay, with that, Mr. Chief. Or if somebody wants to call in before Matt comes on with a question. Absolutely. Now's the time to do it. Do so now. Great point. You have about 10 minutes for the open lines. And most of today's show after or even with Matt, we're going to probably focus a lot on Royal Rumble being tomorrow. Some interesting news and notes around the world of professional wrestling outside of that. And, of course, our birthdays. So, with that, let's get started with I Hear Voices. Rumors are that three names are expected not to participate in the Rumble tomorrow. Brock Lesnar, Ronda Rousey, and the man who's now the mom, Becky Lynch. Thoughts? Well, Chief did some digging and found out that uh, Mr. Lesnar has no contract with WWE right now. And uh, evidently, Ronda Rousey's contract ends up in April. And, of course, Becky just had the baby. So, uh, you know, the first two are they going to save until uh, WrestleMania. And when Becky's ready to come back, she'll come back. Matt? I think some people on the Internet are wild. I was <laughs> reading freaking one of the message board things, and everyone's like, well, if Seth Rollins can come back, why can't Becky come back? I was like, well... Seth Rollins kind of didn't do much. He was Becky just, there. just had a damn baby. So you got to wait for her body to recover. That's right. So probably around WrestleMania season, we'll see Becky. Lesnar can stay on his ranch in freaking Canada. Nobody wants to see him come back. Play with his son. <laughs> and hopefully Ronda Rousey's. Uh, have you seen a picture of his daughter, by the way? No. Oh, uh, Lesnar's? Lesnar's got very strong genes. Yeah, that's the just, female Brock Lesnar. I was just going to say, yeah. Just really? like him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah. haven't. Absolutely. So hopefully yeah. Ronda comes back on Sunday, though. I think that's a, little, a lot of people want to see that one. What's interesting, though, is, is that I read that they're trying to actually get all 30 names of the participants out now ahead of time for some reason, just because no. of like, like Edge. We'll use Edge as an, as an example. OK, it was noted with his announcement Monday night via uh, tape promo that he was coming back. And they said that they purposely did that with the guy like like Edge to raise viewership, knowing he's coming in makes, for Sunday's pay-per-view. Makes sense. Right? Makes sense. So are they going to disclose everybody? Look, the 30th spot for the Women's Rumble, Nat, uh, Natty and uh, uh, Nia ja Nia Jax, they're having a match during the pre-show to determine the 30th spot. So there goes that surprise entrant number. Well, isn't there – I believe there's a show on tonight on FS1. Backstage, yeah. FS1 that's going to oh. – that's going to announce the first two. There you go, Chief. There's our side-by-side -side of Brock Lesnar and his daughter. Holy Hannah. Now, <laughs> where, where, where's, uh, where's what's-his-name when you need him? Bernie. Where's Bernie? No, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, here's, here's the interesting thing. Paul Heyman found a kid who plays football in, I want to say, college, like freshman or, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, there's Bernie. Yay, hey, Bernie. And um, this kid... In the weight room, when he flexes, looks just like Brock as well. Heyman said this is the, the next beast. 
But yeah, that picture of he and his daughter, uh, that really shows, like you said, how the genes don't, don't, uh, uh, they, they can't say fly. that's not they, rock they don't, kid. they don't fall far from the tree. Jeez, my goodness. Wow. All right. Um, so, and I know we'll talk about this later on, about any possible returns or surprises you guys may anticipate. We'll talk about that as well. All right, let's go on to the next topic. Rumor also has it per an inside source that WWE has stated they are considering a finish that is scaring the daylights out of this individual who, who reported this within WWE. What could that possibly be? Now, it's the finish we're talking about for the Rumble, correct? Yeah. What could they do that, that would scare somebody without setting somebody on fire? <laughs> I don't know. It's got to be somebody like nobody wants to like win the thing. Maybe could the fiend could, it could the fiend come up through the uh, the ring through the ring and grab somebody? Possibly could. Maybe is Orton going to be in the uh, rumble? Yeah, yeah. Maybe Orton. I could see like the fiend getting involved somehow. No, I, I, I think if it's like a finished, people are uh, we got a caller. Yeah, we have a caller, and and it's our guest. So. Uh, our guest coming up in full after our break. He's on the line with us now. Let's give a quick hello to our guest who will be joining us here momentarily officially. But let's say hello to our guest, Mr. Matt Robles, the MK Bandit on the road. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, sorry, my tablet and my phone are working heels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. When you book MK, you get the whole deal, you know? There you go. Well, listen, at least we have the plan B, right? Good morning, my brother. Right, right, exactly. Morning, Matt. It's, it's Chief. Good morning. How's mom? Good. She's doing real well. She's doing really well. She's getting the vaccine on the 13th, and so that'll take a ton off my mind, you know, traveling so much and performing. It always, you know, makes me worried. I, I don't think I've hugged my mom in, you know, 10 months, and, you know, it'll be kind of nice to be able to, to kind of have that physical contact again, you know? Okay. I hear you there. Uh, I got two words for you, Rittner and yeah. Swenson. That's yes. Uh, technically, that that's three. Chief. Those two words are the most important words in professional wrestling language right now. And if people don't understand it, you're not a you're not a true fan of wrestling. That's the truth, and it's, it's you know Taz said it once. If you if you didn't get it then, you don't get it now, and you're never going to get it, and you're just a mark. Got it. There you go. All right, listen, Matt. Now that we have you, we're going to step aside for our first break officially. When we come back, then we're going to get started. Head over heels with you going into your vast, well, as much as we can, terrific resume okay. in the world of professional wrestling and everything else that you do. So hang tight. We're going to be back in 60 yes, seconds. You are watching Thoughts Count Anywhere with Aaron, Chief, Matt, Aaron E. on the board, and our guest, Matthew Robles, coming up on the other side of the break. We'll be back in 60 seconds. One. It's not the worst podcast ever, is it? It's no. the best podcast ever. Thoughts count anywhere. All your wrestling news, all your hobbit shit, hey, all your gimmickry. Go on over, listen wherever your podcasts are downloaded. The Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. I'm the big LG Doc Ellis. That's my endorsement. Booyah! This is John Cena. I just, I just, I just wanted to send you a congratulations on your podcast. Thoughts count anywhere because indeed they do. Thoughts are important. I mean, what would the, we do without them? And how can they not count any? I just wonder, is there a place that thoughts don't count? I can't think of one. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much, congratulations, and good luck on the podcast. Thoughts count anywhere, because they do. All right, welcome back to Thoughts Count Anywhere. The gang is all here. Before we get to our guest, Chief is going to stand up, and, and Matt, I know you're listening. You'll have to watch this on the playback, but Chief now is walking to the front of our desk. You can step a little closer. You can go closer. Get right in on that logo, Chief. There you go. A little to your right. There you go. Right there. Matt, uh, uh, Chief is wearing your genuine fucker t-shirt right now. Yeah! Uh, and the hat. <laughs> so right, Very good. There we go. We <laughs> Expletives would sell so well. <laughs> so uh, when you watch the playback, which will be on our Thoughts Count Anywhere Facebook page, you'll be able to see Chief uh, standing right in front of the camera modeling your T-shirt. Now, officially, uh, the MK Bandit uh, is a professional wrestling ring announcer, backstage personality, pro wrestling commentator. Plus, he does have a real life outside of pro wrestling and football. He's, he's not missed 
a, 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 Uni- a Utah University of Utah football game uh, since 1999 as a broadcaster, but more importantly, as a guy who does flat track women's roller derby PA work here in Las Vegas, he has been involved with the Salt Lake City Derby Girls from 2007 to 2010, including holding the title of head referee from 09 to 10, and in appreciation and contribution to the Salt City Derby Girls. They named their banked track the Bandit Bank track in honor of you, sir. And that's the first for me to announce that anybody who's had a roller derby track named after them is always welcome. I'm in Thoughts Count Anywhere. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, roller derby is a sport on the verge. And, um, you know, you know, if you ever see the movie Leatherheads or anything like that, you know that the new extreme sports, that especially one that shoots, takes a little while to, to, to get a foothold. And I truly believe that roller derby is about two to three years away from being huge, tremendous big time because the infrastructure is there. It's just got to get that uh, got to get that big TV contract. Absolutely, and and I've been involved as a PA announcer for some of the uh, uh, roller derby here in town. Uh, the Sin City Roller Girls uh, are one, and the yep. Atomic Roller Girls here in town as well. I've, I'm currently working with them when they when they have their bouts, and it is a lot of fun. Uh, it's almost like part wrestling and part sport when you're trying to announce and do the PA stuff to keep everybody engaged. Yeah. So oh, yeah, it's, you know, yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's a funny story about Sin City. Um, is uh, I actually uh, back in you know at ten, fifteen when they first got started, they didn't have refs, so I would come down and ref with a gentleman by the name of Reject Ted. So, so I, I actually was uh, a regular referee for Sin City for for about. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, and I wondered the, the yeah. time I was there if you were probably on the track and I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, I was one of the, yeah, you know what, when, when, I, uh, when I was doing it, y'all were doing it out of that park where the, with, the, with, the, with the track painted on the, on the concrete. Oh, that's probably the park. That was probably the park at, uh, on uh, uh, Flamingo and like Jones yep. area. That's exactly the one. It yep. was a blast. I, I loved it. And then, and then y'all would come up and play Salt City and Right. You know, I, I just, you know, at the time it was so, so young. I mean, I mean, I literally started uh, with the WFTDA version 1.1 rules, and it was like two pages. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like rule number one: don't kill him. Rule number two: see rule number one. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, all right, let's get started. So, Matt, why don't you? Our, our Matt here in the studio. Matt, why don't you uh, get us started here? Okay, you've, I've seen you a lot in FSW and all that kind of stuff. You're an amazing manager, great heel. If you could manage anybody in the business, who would it be? You know, alive or dead? I mean, are you are you like talking like all time or just someone? <laughs> all time. Now. All time. All time would be Abdullah the Butcher, without a doubt. Wow. I would love to be the Gary Hart to to you know when you when you look at what Playboy Gary Hart did in WCCW and how he introduced uh, Abdullah the Butcher and and how those two work together. I really, really believe that the MK character, uh, the federal director character, or the one I'm currently doing, would have worked really well with Abdullah the Butcher. Uh, you know, maybe this one a little more than the other, because he was just so face, in your face, so so modern. You know, what they did then was what we, they call it wrestling, but what we would call extreme wrestling now. When, when you think about Abdullah the Butcher, Dusty Rhodes, all those guys. So I'd have to say Abdullah the Butcher. That that's a that's a great that, that's a great uh, capture. By the way, the pictures you sent us, Matt, we're going to rotate through on screen during the time we have you on the phone, right. so this way folks can kind of see your vast background. Um, one thing that I do want to ask before Chief jumps in, you know, we talk about you've got a stellar. There's we just put up a picture of Abdullah the Butcher for our audience who may not know who he is, which would be probably about two people, I would think, uh, from our <laughs> wrestling world. Uh, anyway. How did you get into wrestling? What was your fandom? How did you how did you find wrestling? How did you know that this was something for you? Well, you know, it, it started as a kid. I mean, we you know we all we, we you know we insult each other by calling each other marks. But if it wasn't if we weren't marks, then we wouldn't have the love for the business. And the AWA would come through Salt Lake City, Utah. They had their monthly uh, show, and you know I was just like anybody. I I watched it, loved it, felt it was just the greatest thing in, in, in the world and uh you know when you get older and you start you know I, I, as, a, as a boxer and started playing hockey and that stuff it kind of took secondary to, to, to my career but what happened is my in my day job is i'm a structural engineer and we were going to philadelphia pennsylvania in 1996 to do a job at the bulk mail center uh in philly 
And I was staying there for two weeks, and over one of the weekends, one of the friends that I met there said, hey, you like pro wrestling? I'm like, I love pro wrestling. He's like, well, let me take you to this, to this wrestling. It's a little different than what you've seen. Let's go there. Well, they took me to Swanson or Rittner. They took me to the bingo hall. Yep. And when I saw that, it, it just it was unbelievable. I, I, it was just something that it, it awoke something inside myself. And, you know, when I saw Francine get put through that table, when the pit bulls and the heel turn, I was like, this is pro wrestling. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to be. And I, I was married at the time, and I had children, and I kind of put that desire aside. Well, flash forward to 10 years after that, in about 2006, I'm going back to Philadelphia on a related project, and I just kind of looked up an indie show, which was Women's Extreme Wrestling. And I got, I got into the show, and they had asked me, because I showed up so early, you know, if you, if you help set up the ring, we'll let you in for free. And I'm like, well, why wouldn't I, you know? You start making contacts there. And because of my ESPN experience, because of that stuff, uh, they asked. The people started asking me to ring it out to do commentary, and and it just flows from there. You know, you you know, half of life is just showing up. Right. You know, and at one show, I was the guy in a suit that they said we need someone to play the bad guy attorney, and the guy that was playing it didn't show up. They asked me to show up, and and I literally had a background in acting as a child actor and so i just went out there and did my best job and here i am 12 years later yikes carousel kids by the way was the name of that early that's tv right. go ahead chief that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. the oh. carousel kids it was great miss julie i loved her <laughs> <laughs> hey matt i got two questions for you real quick and yes sir you know it's good good talking to you of course you know that good talking to you um first one you take a notice uh when when you were over in Vegas here at FSW, you you managed a person by the name of Ryan Taylor. Yep, that was the first gentleman I managed in, in FSW. Okay, uh, I mentioned it last week. Uh, how how do you feel when you've managed someone who has made it to the big time? Because you know Ryan's Ryan is now on uh, NXT. Yeah. Well, I mean, first off, it, it, it's wonderful to see anybody succeed in any aspect of life, be it pro wrestling or having a successful marriage, you know. So, so I think it's awesome. And, but to see someone sacrifice and chase their dream, especially someone that I know who is so dedicated and so smart for the business, because I think it's great. And let me tell you something. That the greatest thing about independent professional wrestling that I don't think a lot of people understand is is – there are so many really good, talented people out there that just because of circumstance probably won't get a chance. And so when you see someone who has dedicated themselves to the craft, the art of professional wrestling, and to see them succeed, it's wonderful. Now, my second question, my second question is, I know right now you're managing Sam Adonis. And Sam... Yes. Sam is a great independent wrestler. Where, yep. where do you see Sam's career going? Well, there's no question. I mean, you, people, people don't understand. Uh, and it, it's kind of the, uh, you know, I, I'm, not, I, I, I'm, I'm not playing heel here. I'm just being honest because you want me to be honest. People sometimes get WWE vision. And, uh, and, and so they only see what's in the big product, what leads into the big product. But, you know, there's New Japan, All Japan. CMLL, Triple um, uh, A, and Sam was legitimately the top heel in CMLL for a long time. And him and his 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 feud with Negro Casas was probably at the time the biggest feud in the world. And he sold out Arena Mexico multiple multiple times. And so it's it's you know only natural to see that that Sam Adonis in the WWE. And it's, it's just going to happen. It's just a matter of time. And um, as with anything, it, it's timing. It's timing and where can we fit you? You know, sports and wrestling are related, but they're also different. Meaning, sports, no matter who you are, what you look like, how crazy you are, if you're good enough to play for the Kansas City Chiefs or whoever, they're going to give you that shot. In pro wrestling, not only do you have to be a good individual sports athlete but you have to fit a role it's like auditioning literally for a part 
it, as, as if you were auditioning for King Lear in a Shakespeare play or something like that. And so nothing in independent professional wrestling, nothing in professional wrestling is guaranteed. You just got to hope that someone sees you and you fit with what they're trying to do at that time. Great point. And for people who don't realize, Arena Mexico is 50,000 people, folks. That's so, right. That's like a WrestleMania uh, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Matt, I got my last question for you in this round is, when the hell are we going to see Matt Robles on the big screen? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know. <laughs> I, I want know. it. I mean, I'll, I tell you, I really enjoy what I'm doing. And if the opportunity came, I would take it. But I'm not so myopic to think that, that, that maybe my role is not to be the big guy in the big show. Because there's a lot of really good minor league baseball players out there that you never heard of. But made a living in minor league baseball. And maybe that's my role. Uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, given the chance, I I'm just going to put myself over here. Every time I've been given a chance, I've taken it and gone with it, and I've never disappointed anybody. So, you know, whoever out there that's, that's, that's listening, that's, that's in the big time, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's put this out in the universe. Hey, Triple H. Hey, Vince. Yeah, right. Exactly. Sign them. Exactly. Um, Thank you. You guys are I, I just want to say this before we go to our break and before we get ready for the Chiefs rant, which we do at the bottom of the hour. Yes. Um, okay. Matt, you and I connected on Facebook about three years ago, about a year before CAC, the last time it was live. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was yeah. at that point, I was working exclusively at that time for Big Valley Wrestling and BVW was part of the card that was there those couple of nights. And, and I had the pleasure because of BVW to have an opportunity, A, to attend my first CAC convention as a guy who's been watching wrestling since 1976 was I was like wow. a kid in a candy shop. And then as I was talking with the folks of BVW to, to connect with some guy named Matt Robles, who's handing all the commentary for all the wrestling, I look you up. I'm like, crap, we're already connected. So that's good. You know, <laughs> yeah. Introdu introduce yeah. myself to you. And then when I had an opportunity to meet you in person, what you did not yeah. know is when you were on the mic doing your matches and you were kind to everybody, you, you wanted to make sure everybody else who was there to do commentary had opportunities upon opportunities outside of the card or the matches that you yourself either wanted to do or selected to do. And you gave, like myself and, and my partner at the time, maybe an extra match or two. I got to say this. I sat behind you, dude, and I, I listened your mannerism. I listened to your tone. I sat there like I was in a teacher's classroom to absorb your, seriously, because this is how I, listen, I, I've been doing this for 15 years. I've been a member, I'm a member of the Las Vegas Entertainers Hall of Fame. I think I do okay, but I'm my own worst enemy. So anytime I have an opportunity to study somebody who's been there, done that before me, you bet your backside that I'm going to be watching, taking notes and saying, man, I got to start trying that or this or that. You, sir, are one hell of a mentor to a guy like me who is always looking to learn. And your years in the industry from all angles gives you a perspective that I could never, ever have because I've not done the things that you've done from a wrestling standpoint. And I want you to know how much you taught me just watching and listening to you those two days we were there for CAC. I saw you at FSW the last time I was there, a couple about a month, two months ago. It was great to see you, I, you know, and, and interact with you. I want to do more of that because you are one hell of a teacher. You know your stuff. And, and I'm just happy to say that, I can, that I'm associated with you and that I've learned and you are a teacher for me in Thank being in you. the world of wrestling behind a microphone. That means a lot to me. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And, you know, uh, uh, learning, I, I learn from everybody I worked with, and, and uh, I really appreciate you saying that, because the one thing in professional wrestling is you never stop learning. And, and, and I really appreciate you saying that. Uh, yeah, no, no problem. All right, we're gonna, we have a little segment now, and I'm going to have my producer kind of start queuing this up. We have a segment because, as you know, Chief, as well as just about anybody, it doesn't take much to get under Chief's skin to when he starts wanting to go off on a topic. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we've come up with a segment that we've been doing now called The Chief's Rant. All right, y'all, here we go. I've got a hot topic for today. Jerry Graham, Baron Mikel Cicluna, Angelo Savoldi. 
superstar Billy Graham, Pedro Morales, Bruno San Martino, Nick Bockwinkel. You can, I didn't know you could ever bet on pro wrestling. I wonder how many of the other people knew. Anyway, folks, I seen people like Cindy Lauper, Mr. T, Shaq, Dennis Rodman in the wrestling ring. Personalities come to pro wrestling. However, a certain pro wrestling company recently put a show on TV and YouTube. They decided to bring in a person convicted of two felony charges. And he admitted to it. He was a basketball ref. His name Tom Dunahy. A former NBA ref pled guilty to the charges. Now the company brought him with referee in a Caribbean strap match between Holiday and Savio Vega. I watched the entire match. At first, he did his job, but at the end of the match, he got between Vega and the fourth turnbuckle, grabbed the back of Vega's shirt, pulled him out of the way, so Holiday got the win. Really, the question is, do we really need this kind of shit in pro wrestling? The fellows I mentioned at the beginning of my rant were pro wrestlers. Blood, sweat, guts. And I forgot one important one, the fabulous Mola. But getting back to, getting back to this show, do we re really need a felon in pro wrestling? Or are we getting away from pro wrestling? Okay, you all know my thoughts on the flippy shit. I accept it. It's part of pro wrestling today. But I'm talking pro wrestling, period. In my mind, we have had other wrestlers who have been in trouble with the law. I understand that. But to bring this fella in who was convicted, did 15 months in prison, and now he's coming into pro wrestling, does he really need a job that bad? Evidently, you know, being a felon, I guess it's kind of hard. But you know what? In my mind, in the Chiefs ramp mind, he don't need to be in pro wrestling. So the company who he uh, appeared for, get him the hell out of your ring and get back to wrestling. That's the Chiefs rant for today, over and out. There you have it. The Chief, speaking his mind as only he can, Right here on Thoughts Count Anywhere. We want to thank you for tuning in. You are watching the latest, fresh edition of Thoughts Count Anywhere, coming to you live from the Go Live Vegas studios in Las Vegas. I'm Aaron Phillips, sitting alongside the Chief, Matt Mullen, Aaron E. at the board, and our special guest who's on the road right now, heading to West Virginia. We're going to continue chatting with Mr. Matt Robles, who's continuing to join us. And God, God, uh, God thank the fact that he is using hands-free as he's driving and talking to us on his phone. Yes. <laughs> so yes, yes. we, we want to... hands-free. Absolutely. Hey, listen, a question came in to me uh, uh, during Chief's rant, and I'm going to share it with you. I'm sure you know who Garth is, right? Yes. Uh, yes. All right, yeah, so... He's the guy that every time I get hurt, he always takes a picture and then posts it. That's correct. Well, he does, don't feel bad. He does that with everybody. Yeah, that's... Seen that. <laughs> That's that ball headed guy. Don't yeah, worry. That, hey, talk nice. Yeah. I'm trying to talk to him to be a sponsor of the show. Will you please? Oh. Okay. Garth is awesome. So, yeah. Mostly Mazda. Yes. Yeah, especially <laughs> Mazda. Right, exactly. So, he mentioned to me that you guys were chatting, I guess, last night on the phone. So, he forgot to ask you and asked me to ask you this. He wants to know which flea market do you get your track suits at so he can buy some for himself? Uh, ha, ha. You know, the thing about it, a guy like that, he can make fun of me all he wants. He can make fun of the stuff that I wear all he wants. But it's the only stuff I have clean because all my dirty shit's at his mom's house. His mom's house. Oh, no. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. That's not true. Uh, I, 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 I know for a fact 
I know for a fact that you pe- you chase people down with Swenson and Ritten in two blocks to steal that stuff. Don't okay. don't lie oh, about it. Man. Don't lie about it now. Man, oh man. All right, I want to change gears <laughs> gears on you. My God. Listen, that's why this show is called Thoughts Count Anywhere, because we go anywhere we want to without any hesitation. That's right. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll effectively insult anybody and everybody. Anyway, um, listen, story career behind a microphone doing football and everything. You mentioned it in your uh, uh, Kansas City before. i got to ask you, give me a Super Bowl prediction. i, I got I to go with the guy that's been there before. You, you, know, you, know, you know what I mean? I mean, Tampa. you know, there's a, there's a, there's a uh, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, like, an era or, or something around Tom Brady that I, I can't understand it. And it just seems like, you know, everything bounces his way, no matter how hard or no matter how tough the other teams are. And I just have to go with Tampa Bay. It's like he was bored and was like, hey, let me pick a random team. Hey, do you guys want to go to the Super Bowl <laughs> next year? <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, let me put it this way. If, Again, I mean, if, if, if in all honesty, I was never a Tom Brady fan. I'm not going to say I'm a fan now, but I have a tremendous amount of respect for the guy because at first I was always one of the apologetic guys. They're like, look, he's a system guy. He's in Belichick's system. They got this defense, blah, 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 blah. But like you said, he just basically picked a random team and took them to the Super Bowl. I mean, who does that? Well, Tom Maybe Brady. Kurt Warner? Yeah, well, Kurt Warner. I guess you could say Kurt Warner with the with the Cardinals, but I mean that was a tremendous team. But I mean, like I said, Tom Brady is the only one in my lifetime I've ever really, not just. I mean, I mean, what is it, ten Super Bowls or something like that? He's yeah, he's been to. Listen, the only team he really doesn't want to face in the Super Bowl are my Giants because that's a guaranteed loss. Yes. <laughs> That's that, crazy. One person has been in like 13% of all Super Bowls. Yeah, that's crazy. That's unbelievable. I that's think that's unbelievable. So, I, wonder I mean, th- what more does he have to say? He's the Hulk Hogan of he's the Hulk Hogan of of, uh, of of professional football. When you think about it, he's the guy that that's caught. I mean, whether you lo- you know, this is this is an interesting topic because the thing that people got to understand about like pro wrestling, sports, and everything, when that one individual steps forward and everybody's talking about him. It's good for the sport because whether you hate Brady or like him, you think he's overrated, you don't think he's overrated, he's the one people are talking about in the mainstream. And that's kind of the thing in pro wrestling that you have to get. You've got to get everybody either hating you or loving you because at some point in time, those are all ticket payers that weren't paying attention to professional wrestling before you came along. And that's that's kind of the Hulk Hogan, the Tom Brady charisma when you really think about it. Absolutely. It's a great point. Uh, Matt, I got two two things now. Hang on one second. Did you have something you wanted to touch on real quickly? Oh, yeah. Talking to you a couple times in Vegas. I know you're a huge Kiss fan. What's the coolest yeah, piece oh, of yeah. memorabilia you have from the band? Oh, I would say um, I have, I have uh, uh, the sketches uh, that Ken Kelly did um, for the Faces of the Destroyer album cover. There's pencil oh. sketches that he presented wow. to Kiss to say, you know, because they drew the whole overall, you know, you know, thing, and then he had to redo it, and then, um, and then, okay, now what facial expressions do you want? So he sketched out a bunch of, on, on, you know, scratch paper, a bunch of facial expressions, and the ones they chose, were, that's what I have. And I, I really, it's really special because they're one of one. There's, there's, there aren't any. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Nice. My, my time yeah. in high school, I was telling the guys before we went on the air when I saw that in the list of questions, Two consecutive years, I dressed as Ace Freely, top to bottom, makeup to boots. It was tremendous. It was a lot That's of so for awesome. Halloween. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was a lot last of fun. Tuesday. So don't awesome. lie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> is, he, is he one of the guys that's giving you trouble down on Fremont Street? That's right. I dress up as Ace Freely. The band is up on the screen. Uh, we have kids. Right, listen, these guys are are been around a long time. Uh, are they? Listen, we for years they were not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Did they finally get in last year or this year or something? No, they got in. Well, here's the the controversy with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, is they they felt slighted because they were get, they, they're still an active band in their mind. They're not a nostalgic. They're an active band. They put out albums, and so what happened is they were admitted to the Hall of Fame, and they're currently a band. So they wanted to bring in Tommy Thayer and Eric. They wanted to bring in Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer to be part of the you know in. in in induction right and they said no we want ace fraley and peter chris and they're like well okay that's great but they're not members of kiss anymore right and and haven't been 
And so it was kind of this controversy, and that's honestly why they didn't play. And so they were led into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but, but Paul and Gene have been very, very vocal that that doesn't mean much to them, that, that they kind of felt that the Hall of Fame is a sham. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but that's, no, they, no, they, yes. they are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but it was kind of a real awkward moment because they were very outspoken even at the time. I think it was 2016 is when they were when they were let in. Gotcha. Our producer just put up a picture of a different kind of kiss between Tom Brady and Robert Kraft after winning a game. So that takes kiss to a whole different <laughs> level. You got your Brady, you got your goat there, and Kraft, who of course we know was found in some places he shouldn't have been in a couple of years ago at a Super Bowl. Anyway, yeah. uh, let, I want to I want to fire one or two more at Matt so we can concentrate on driving safely and getting to his uh, his uh, appointment yeah. tonight. So, uh, Chief. Okay, real quick. If you want to see Matt on a pretty regular basis in the local area, Devotion Championship Wrestling up in Utah. And uh, I believe Manny Lemons uh, is up yeah. there, and he's doing a good job along with you in, uh, I believe, Al Snow, isn't it, Matt? And Yeah, and, and uh, it's kind of an interesting amalgam of, of talent. Uh, you know, Manny Lemons, it's his, it's his baby. I'm just talent. It's Devotion Championship Wrestling. But uh, we're, 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 we have a, a TV product that is actually written by and booked by Vince Russo. Oh. And um, so, Bro. so yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's the thing. So everything that you're seeing in Devotion Championship Wrestling is written by Vince Russo. And they, the school that they have there is an Al, is an Al Snow school. So it's really interesting. It's, it's, the thing I like about the product is, um, you know, talking about learning, talking about learning from someone. Man, that, that Vince Russo, like him or hate him, his ideas are really amazing because he thinks like, like you know, like, like, like you know, Bobby Fischer thinks chess. You know, he'll have me do something on one week, and I, I don't quite understand why I'm doing it, but I trust him. And then, like, six weeks down the line or six shows down the line, I'm like, oh, that's why he had me do that. You know what I mean? And so it's a really good product. Uh, I, I love I love working for Manny. It, it's great. And, you know, Sam Sam comes down there, you know, a couple times. Um, Katarina's been in there. I mean, there's always talent. Um, we had Glacier. It's, it's a great product. I got to get up there, brother. I, I was going to say, if, if, you ever yeah. need a, if you ever need a backup voice or something, you know I'm right here for you. I'll tell you what. I, I'm telling you, this is, this, is, this, is, this is a heartfelt extension. Any of you want to come up and be part of the show, you let me know. You come up, and we will put. We'll, we'll, we'll get you. We'll, we'll fit you in. The All right, one hundred percent. You got it. We'll do that. That's a that, promise. All right, you got it. That is so cool. All right, one final question for Mr. Matt that we love asking all of our guests before we'll let you go and continue driving. Okay. So, Matt, take it away. Who's your Mount Rushmore of wrestling? Mount Rushmore of wrestling would definitely be Paul Heyman, um, Tommy Dreamer. Hulk Hogan, and uh, I would say Dusty Rhodes. You know what? That's an interesting combination of characters, mainstream wrestling and Hulk Hogan and such, to the ECW genre uh, of style of wrestling. There, I, I love the variety. There wouldn't from, be, there wouldn't be, there, I, I am a heartfelt believer that there wouldn't be wrestling today had it not been for ECW. I really believe that. I, I, I really, truly believe that. Um, you know, you know, you know, say what you will about the style, but wrestling was dead in the mid nineties. It just was, you talk to anybody there and ECW does not get the credit or it's just now getting the credit that it deserves for kicking off the ideas that, that got to the hot point in professional wrestling, which was the attitude era. And all those guys can thank Paul Heyman. Right on, right on. All right. We're going to let you go on one condition. You are on your way to an event down in West Virginia. Give me a promo shoot yep. for what you're doing tonight. Give me a promo for what's going on tonight. Okay. Give me, me a me, shoot. Me, Get, I just want, okay, here we go. Let me do one last thing before I go. I want to mention February 12th. I'm going to be in Arlington, and it's going to be Sam versus Psycho Clown, and it's on Fight TV, so you don't want to pass that up. You got now, it. Now, you want me to do a, pro, you want me to do a promo about uh, 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 tonight, like a, a, a promo? Okay. Um, Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight in West Virginia, you do not know what is coming down the freeway. You think you know pro wrestling? You think you know what it's all about, but I'm here to tell you 
You don't know anything. Because I am here to educate you. People think that I hate you, but I don't. I just see your small minds for what they are, and I'm here to help you out and help you understand what professional wrestling is about. Boo me all you want. But when my guy's hand is raised in victory, you will have a new understanding of professional wrestling, and you will bow down before both of us and thank us for gracing your shitty, smelly ring. You suck. (laughs) <laughs> your mother taught me how uh, oh on oh. that note thank you for watching everybody we'll now be kicked off the air no that's the beauty <laughs> the beauty of internet radio is we can tell everybody to suck off without the FCC knocking on our door anyway Matt thank you so so much for your time genuinely appreciate it thank you, it. Such a pleasure. Well, uh, thank you. I mean honestly that is really you know you know honestly please if you want to come to, to devotion anytime just let me know we will we will we will find, you know we'll get a spot for for you guys uh, seriously I, that is my promise all right you got it next time you gotta let us know uh, when you're in vegas we want you in studio next time definitely definitely i i will be there all right cool thank you matt drive safe my friend we'll talk soon love you my brother thank you very much we'll safe travels soon. man love thank you, guys. you thank you all right matt robles also knows the mk banner what a great what a what a wealth of knowledge Oh, I yeah. mean, when you look at everything he's done in the, you know, you look at his bio and, and everything, I mean, th- this guy to tap into that knowledge for anybody on any level of wrestling is, is worth a million bucks. All right, let's, uh, do we want to do what is it? You actually fixed the clock on the wall to match the phone. You have been throwing me off all show. The clock on the wall used to be four minutes ahead of the clock on the here. And I'm like, oh, we got to, no, wait a minute. It's the same time. Um, all right, let's keep rolling. Um, all right, let's go into Royal Rumble. Let's talk about that. That's a big thing, uh, obviously, happening tomorrow night. Let's talk about that. And if time allows, we'll go into maybe one or two headlines. If not, culture and birthdays to wrap it up. Sweet. All right. So for the first match, uh, WWE Championship, McIntyre and Goldberg. Gentlemen? I th- as much as I want to say McIntyre wins, I'm kind of leaning towards Goldberg wins and Miz cashes in on Goldberg. And then when do we see McIntyre getting the belt back? You know, WrestleMania. WrestleMania. And so Miz will keep it for a couple of months? So if there's like 25,000 fans in attendance, it'll somewhat give McIntyre his WrestleMania moment. Great point. Great point. Chief? I'll pass. 702-329-6947 is our number. Press number one to come into the studio and give us your predictions. By the way, has anybody noticed? I know you guys have. I am now wearing one of our latest... Piece of merchandise, the Thoughts Can Anywhere Fire microphone is now available on ThoughtsCanAnywhere.com. Just click the Shop tab, and all your favorite Thoughts Can Anywhere gear is now available in all sizes and all different types of products. So come ch- go check it out. We want to shout out to Lisa Mascari, who took a picture. She finally got her TCA sweatshirt this week. All cozy on the snowy day we had this week. So, Okay, uh, next match, Universal Championship, Reigns and Owens in a last man standing match. I want to see Owens kick his ass so bad it's not funny. Does that mean he wins? He, he wins, wins. The belt. He wins. Okay, Matt? Roman Reigns retains. Yeah, my concern is in a last man standing match, we know it's going to be a handicap match. We know Uso's going to get involved. It'll be hard. Uh, now, everybody's thinking maybe Jimmy's going to show up here. What will Jimmy do? But isn't the Usos in uh, the Royal... In the Doesn't Royal matter. Last man standing. If there's no DQ, no, no nothing. He can come in and get involved in that match whenever he wants to, well, right? somebody could come in and uh, help Owens, too. Uh, like, absolutely. Like Adam Pierce. Uh, there you go. It can, it can work both ways. No question. All right. Women's tag championship match. Flair... Uh, tag, ta- yeah, tag match. Flair and Asuka versus Baszler and Jax. My favorite wrestler is whoever's going against Nia Jax. <laughs> so Oscar and Charlotte. Okay. I agree with that 100%. But don't they have to drop the tag belts at some point so that Flair and Lacey's story kind of escalate more in a one-on-one? Not that they haven't been ignoring the tag champs anyway, but... Well, I, I, I don't disagree with you, but I think once Rhea Ripley gets up there and she finds a uh, tag team partner, uh, maybe uh, some, some lady by the name of Tessa... Uh, maybe they'll win the belts. There you you never go. know. She may show up at the Rumble this weekend. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Mike Halverson, who's listening right now. Thank you, uh, Mike. Goldberg coming back is a crappy stunt to increase viewers. That's Mike Halverson's opinion. We appreciate you, Mike. Thank you for tuning in. The correct in. opinion. Yeah, we all, yeah, exactly. We all agree with that. All what right, was, next. What was his opinion? 
Uh, that Goldberg is nothing more than coming in for uh, ratings. Thank you very much. There you go. Eloquently said. All right, next match. SmackDown Women's Championship. Banks versus Carmella. I don't see Banks losing the belt. I don't see Banks losing either. That dude that's with Carmella is... That dude's super athletic and good, but Sasha Banks is retaining. Well, being that Sasha just had a uh, birthday, uh, I think, recently, uh, she's probably going to retain. I don't disagree with you, gentlemen. Yeah, she, she did have a birthday. It was announced on Twitter, and so I put a message out there, uh, happy birthday, champ, and she actually replied with a thank you. Yeah, How cool is sure. that? Hey, maybe we can, well, no, we can't. Yeah. Can't get anybody. No. Uh, all right, let's talk about the Women's Royal Rumble match. Who do you think will come out victorious? We know who the odds makers are saying. Is right is Bianca, right? Yeah. I, I if Rhea comes up, I think is gonna win it just so that, as you said, uh Flair and um Lacey. Lacey, but Rhea's got some payback. I think Charlotte. if there's anybody on the roster currently it's Rhea Ripley. And if it's some kind of surprise in a perfect world, if the wrestling gods are listening, <laughs> Tessa Blanchard okay. comes Vince, in and wins. Vince, are you listening? If not, Vince, can you hear me? Shane, <laughs> please, Shane, bring Tessa in. She's well worth it. Hashtag Vince, can you hear us now? Um, now, Nia Jax and uh, Natty are pre-show having a match to determine who's coming in at number 30 for the Women's Rumble. So essentially, Jax could, will be could be no. She What's will. Tamina and Tamina and Natalia. Oh, I meant Tamina. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. Tamina. Not, I said that earlier. And it's on the FS1 show Did, tonight. Didn't I see? Oh, okay. I thought it was pre-show tomorrow. Okay. Very th- good. Never mind. I thought I saw somewhere where it said Tamina was already in the Rumble, or was it Nia? Well, they're all in the Rumble. They're just having the match for the number thirty spot. Yeah. Maybe my Halfheimer's just kicking in. <laughs> Mike Halverson is not a big fan. <laughs> is not a big fan of the Miz. He loves. Uh, let's see. Uh, Philip Campbell says I have some great respect for Goldberg. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike says WWE is too manufactured. The product sucks, which I think everybody's in agree with. There. He also says Owens is the biz. Fat guys that can work finally get their way in the ring. Absolutely. And Mike says that I hope that uh, Miz falls into a deep hole. Uh, Jax isn't being used well enough. Uh, Natalia is overproduced. My, yeah, Mike, you're on rapid fire, dude. One, one of the Keep best, it coming. One of the best big men I ever saw, Yokozuna. Yeah. And he could move around. And as ring. a matter of fact, on the network, they're, they're, uh, his launching of his I, the Icon series continues, and I think they're doing Yokozuna tomorrow night. Yes, yep. they are. Uh, all right, Men's Royal Rumble match. I think the door is open on this, but I think Daniel Bryan is still slated as a quote-unquote favorite to win. Thoughts? I'm going to go with AJ Styles. Oh. Okay. I didn't see that coming. I'm going to go with Cesaro. Surprise entrances for the men's match. Who do you think will? Now, we know Edge is, is in because he announced that Monday. That was maybe going to be a surprise. Who do you think? Because I don't think the entire 30 uh, men list is produced yet. I don't remember seeing uh-huh. all 30 names. But as a surprise, who would you like to see come in? For the men's. Like every other year, CM Punk. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That, but you know what? That's another guy. If they were to ever do anything, how could you bring him in when there's no fans? The fans, if they had fans there, man, it would blow the roof off. True. You know? You know, you would, somebody that still wrestles, mm-hmm. Terry Funk. Oh. That's you, interesting. You, you want to you blow a match up? Bring Terry Funk in. Well, Mike Halverson said that Yokozuna was one of his teachers. Mike is a former pro wrestler. Oh, wow. And uh, he says that he worked with Yokozuna a year and a half before he died, and, and he was one of his students. So that, that's a pretty cool connection. Um, with, I, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. Go, no, no, go ahead. I was going to say with Randy Orton, like, RKOing Alexa Bliss at the end of Raw with, like, his burnt face. Right. I want to see The Fiend come back with some kind of, like, burnt mask or do something, like, crazy. <laughs> He's going to doing something crazy to Randy Orton, but it would be cool if he won the Rumble, too. Yeah. All right. The, I think these Royal Rumbles are wide open right now. I don't care who they list as favorites. Daniel Bryan, if he wins, I think we'd all pretty much agree that that could be sort of like his last ride, so to speak. I don't mean to see yeah. anything from The Undertaker. Although, he came out on, in an article this week. Bryan said that he would love to wrestle till he's 60. You know, the interesting thing last night was um, 
seeing AJ and Bryant wrestle because how many years ago did AJ and uh, Daniel wrestle for ROH? A long time ago. And I remember that match, and that was a true wrestling match. That match was off the hook last night, too. Yes, it was. So let me give you some, some history on Mike. That we're just, First, like puts in there, he says, all the wrestlers that come from the Performance Center are Xerox copies of Xerox copies of Xerox copies of Xerox copies. Then he writes, I wrestled so long ago that he wrestled Bob Orton and his brother. Oh, wow. So that gives you an idea as to Mike's uh, lineage in wrestling. Mike, we're going to have to meet sometime and talk about old school. He has a great printing business, by the way. And he does ever he had been showing up every once in a while to Versus when they were allowing people in. Uh, so I'll, I'll connect with you. I'll make an intro for the two of you. All right. We have about six minutes left, five minutes left. So... Uh, we're done with the Royal Rumble stuff. I'm going to defer to you. Is there anything under any of the other reports for WWE or AEW slash Impact that you want to touch? Yes. Go. What was your previous favorite Royal Rumble? And I've got three. Okay. 2013 C familiar. CM Punk versus The Rock. 2001 Triple H versus Angle. Okay. And my favorite... 2018 Women's Royal Rumble first one. match. That was the first one, right? They put it over. Yeah, absolutely. They put them on the map. Right, absolutely. Matt, did you want to share one? Did My you? favorite Royal Rumble, just because of pure shock factor, is when Vince McMahon won the Royal Rumble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, all right, so let's move on. We have a couple of items. Let's go to pop culture. Uh, we'll, is there anything on the AEW Impact Report that we want to share? I'm still stunned that like their Shaq is doing a probably a match at Revolution with was it Cogill against Cody and Red Velvet, yeah. even though like he's doing like a Super Bowl special filled with WWE superstars, and like no AEW people are going to be in there, so it's kind of odd. Yeah, doesn't make sense. If you've been on this one show, why would you not? I don't know. Uh, I'm Matt, glad, oh, I'm glad to see Matt Cardona back wrestling. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Signed with Impact. Uh, and, of course, just for reference, uh, Amanda Huber, who, of course, was um, uh, Brody Lee's wife, uh, was on a podcast running down the chronology of the last couple of months of Brody's life. It's worth a listen because as I read the excerpts, Matt, you said you replayed and heard it. There are quite some uh, eye-opening piece of information that came out. So make sure you search, uh, search for that. All right, let's quickly do some birthdays. And then we'll get into pop culture. So if you are celebrating a birthday starting today through next Friday, first of all, from all of us here at Thoughts Can Anywhere, we want to wish you a happy birthday. And if you are celebrating, are you looking? Are you pausing for the music? Well, that's why I'm, <laughs> I'm seeing him searching. There we go. Happy birthday. All right. That's right. That's what we call vamping in the business. Anyway, January 30th, happy birthday to Giant Gonzalez. Becky Lynch, the mom, Woo! and Drake Maverick. January 31st, Fit Finley. February 1st, Ronda Rousey. February 2nd, Teddy Hart, Brian Cage. February 3rd, Haku, who I had an opportunity to meet at CAC two years ago. Great guy, still looks like he can go today. Marty Jannetty, Kevin Von Eric, and Devin Taylor. February 4th. Great. What happened to my mic? Chris Sabin, Damian Priest. There we go. And February 5th, Madison Rain. And if you're celebrating a birthday with all those wrestlers, happy birthday once again. Woo! All right. That does it for birthdays. Happy birthday. Let's go into some pop culture. Matt, why don't you take the first one? I'm about as excited for this news as I am for the Royal Rumble. They finally announced the Snyder Cut of the Duchess League is coming out March 18th. And it's like the original of what the movie was supposed to be with like Green Lantern and a whole bunch of other characters. Oh, really? That were and It's going to be a four-hour long movie. Sheesh. You better pack a pillow with your popcorn. I can't wait. It's They reshot a bunch of stuff, and all the stuff that didn't make the original movie is going to be on there. It's going to be and where can that pretty be epic. Seen? HBO Max. HBO Max. I better get a big bucket of popcorn. Me too. Yeah, first, you got to get HBO Max. You have HBO Max? No. You better order that first. No. Before then, you don't. No. Then don't get popcorn. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm ordering. Uh, where the hell is it at? I'm ordering NBC Peacock. See, I'm glad you brought that up 
those who already have a network membership, like I do at nine ninety nine. Um, I do too. What are they going to do with those of us who already have a membership? We're shit out of luck. Are you serious? We have to re up on Peacock, and we're going to lose our nine ninety nine over there. That's what I hear. Uh, that's not good. I think it's four ninety nine for like the commercial version, I, yeah, and nine ninety nine for the. Jeez, my so, wife's not going to be happy with me. So, that's kind of cool. You can watch WWE in the office on the same thing. It only took me six months to figure WWE Network out, and now I got it. Now it's going to take me six. Months I only to bought do the NBC. network years ago when it started first, really for just the pay per views. Yeah, that's I agree. How annoying it is. I had that thing since day one, and I always get those emails. Oh, you qualify for a free month, and I'm like, stop taking money out of my damn account, then. <laughs> exactly. All right, real quickly, Chief. Next topic there. The, the anniversary of the Challenger explosion. Thank you, sir. Um, 35 years ago. Yeah. I, uh, I was over in, J I was in Jacksonville, Florida when it happened and uh, in the military. And I remember we got the word at work um, that it happened. It was a horrible day in uh, the space program and, uh, you know, that was the first, if I'm not mistaken, the first school teacher that went yes. up in. Yes, uh, that is correct. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I was in the student union building at Penn State having lunch at 1130 something in the morning when all that when all that transpired. By the way, Mike Halverson says we need he says we should go two hours. So, Mike, we love the idea. You and I then would need to talk about sponsorship. We would need support <laughs> to extend our show. So if that, we need to talk then, if that's and we we love it, we'd love to. But you know what our situation is. Airtime is money. So we would we should talk then. I was only like three when it happened. But did you guys see that documentary on Netflix about the Challenger explosion? I heard about it. I have not watched it. How people are not in prison over that? I have zero idea. The old ring and all that stuff, right? The, yeah, and they were like, it's too cold, and they were like, ah, oh, put it up anyway. Yeah. That's called PMS checks before launching, right. and they probably didn't do it. Last thing I'm going to cover as a huge baseball fan, no Major League Baseball Hall of Fame inductees this year were announced. A lot of debate. Kurt Schilling was the only one who came closest. He needed like 15 or 16 more votes. I think he got 71%. You need 75% to get in. All the debate about Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds and everybody who's in the steroid era at that time. Uh, as to why none of them got in. Kurt Schilling wants to be removed from the list for his final year of eligibility next year. He says that the fans haven't voted him in by this point or, who, or the entire conglomerate. He'll leave, his, his, uh, uh, leave it up to the uh, Veterans Committee uh, and all of those starting next year. So uh, the good thing is, in my mind, Derek Jeter will, finally, will, will be uh, inducted this year from last year's class yeah. without any of the distractions and the debate about those guys who might have gotten in that were part of the steroid era and controversy and all that sort of stuff. With all that, like what happened, A-Rod's available next year. Do you think he'll get in? No. 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 But one thing that he did, and, and, and we'll end on this because I know we're over, him, Andy Pettit, just to name two. Although A-Rod denied it, apologized, got caught again, and then finally got, you know, came out uh, saying yes, J-Lo has been very instrumental in cleaning up his public image and getting past that. The A-Rod today that we see with J-Lo is not the A-Rod that we saw play ball as the diva with all the PEDs. It's got to be a much worse A-Rod now because J-Lo is a horrible human being. <laughs> well, you seen A-Rod shaking hands with presidents uh, last week? I did not. He was in Washington with J-Lo uh, at the inauguration. Well, that, that's, listen, it, you... Play, you play the game, don't hate the game, or the player, just hate the game if that's the case. If I had an opportunity to shake hands with the president if from, him, from an historical standpoint, except oh. for maybe one, but anyway. I don't have a problem with that. The problem I've got, though, is he doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I, 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 but going back to Andy Pettit, his name's going to come up, I think, next year also. He, he was not anywhere near the use of the other guys whose names we know. He came out, he apologized, he pitched, and that was it. He cleaned up. Same thing with Jason Giambi. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The guy who I think is the epitome for those guys, Raphael Palmero, who played for the Orioles, who was destined to, was destined, in my opinion, to be a Hall of Famer, went in front of Congress. Denied it. Saying, Mr. Senator, not one time did I ever take, you know, and he pointed and, and then two years it comes out how he lied through his teeth. That's the worst one. He's like the poster child.
Yeah. of doing something like that. And that's why a guy like that will never get in. He was destined. Anyway, we are a little over our time. We want to thank everybody for watching today. Matt, final thoughts. Everybody be safe out there. Hopefully this will end some point. Let's hope so. Wear your mask, wash your hands, wash your clothes, stay safe. Come back, see us next week. You got it. And again, we want to thank our very special guest who joined us on the road this week, Mr. Matt Robles. And I know we'll hear more from him when he's in town. We'll get him back on the phone. All right, with that, been a great show. Reminder, 12 noon, two hours. Neil Portnoy and I will be back with twin brothers from different numbers. L what? Twin brothers from different mothers and lovers. That's and a whole weird another show. Nobody knows. Different, no, 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 no. different mothers. That show will be debuting at midnight tonight. Uh, uh, anyway. Brown Twin brothers for <laughs> different mothers. Matt Dorman from the Dorman Band uh, will be in studio talking about his life, his music, and everything we got going on. So be sure to join us at noontime. I am Aaron Phillips. As always, be kind to each other. Why is that? We're all we have. We'll see you next week right here on Thoughts Count Anywhere. Thank you for watching.